Rafe Bartholomew is an author and basketball enthusiast. He is best known for his book, Pacific Rims, which highlights the sport Filipinos all know and love, basketball. Going deeper into the country's passion for the game and the effect it has on the nation. His work has been featured in respective publications such as New York Times, The Chicago Reader, Slate, and Deadspin. Rafe's passion and drive for doing what he does inspires people all over the world. Whether he's writing, playing basketball, or on the go, he gives everything, he does his all, and that is what makes him the inspiring individual that he is today. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of In Love With Me, where we feature inspiring individuals who will share their amazing stories. I am your host, Mafe Yunon Belasco, and for this series, our topic is passion and purpose. For this episode, we have an empowered man, basketball enthusiast, writer, and author of Pacific Rims to motivate us to take action. So without further ado, let me welcome the amazing Rafe Bartholomew. Hi, Rafe. Hey, Mafe, thank you. It's it's a long time no see, and uh, it's great to be here. <laughs> You're in Detroit right now, right? Mm, right outside of Detroit. I, I live in Ferndale, Michigan, uh, not too far from, I guess, where Kelly Williams went to college in uh, Oakland University. So it's 10 o'clock over there for you, it's Friday night, um, and... You know, I'm so grateful for you taking the time to be part of this campaign, sharing your life story and what motivates you. Um, I'm pretty sure you've been busy also during this lockdown period, um, you know, this challenging time. But before I ask you what you've been up to lately, can you please share with us, Rafe, on how you are the empowered and inspiring man that you are today? Sure. I, I mean, I think for me, the the greatest inspiration of my life and career and what I hope that people can also find inspiring, especially, you know, for, for a Pinoy audience is the way that I came from a position of being kind of a regular clueless American guy who was just, you know, I was from New York. I, and didn't know a whole lot about what I wanted to do when I was in college or what I, or what my passions were. And I was inspired by one chapter in a book that uh, a Sports Illustrated writer about where he visited the Philippines and wrote about uh, the 90s PBA. He wrote about, you know, Senator Robert Jaworski. He wrote about kids playing in Chinelas and people, you know, building their own basketball courts. And to me, it was a world I had never imagined before. And it inspired me and, and gave me this passion for a sport I already loved to go learn about what it meant uh, on a, you know, in a country I, I, at the time, I didn't know anything about. And that, that moment changed my life forever in so many ways. Obviously, I, I met you when I was in the Philippines. I met Nick. I met, you know, I, I spent all the years working on Pacific Rims and, I, and I've been back almost every year since. I, I wish, I, I still pray that somehow I can make it back in 2020, even though it seems unlikely at this point in time. But if not, then 2021, I, I will be back and I'll see you all again. Um, but that, that, in, that, that is the passion and purpose that, that, that honestly empowered me and I hope also inspires others because it was something that I never expected, never could have predicted, but I was willing to follow that inspiration and it brought me the, to the greatest uh, career achievements in my life as well as the happiest moments of my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, let's rewind a little bit more. Yes. When did the passion of being a writer come about? I mean, was it in grade school, high school? Like, were you already passionate about, um, you know, writing? Because, of course, you know, being a writer is such a, an ama amazing talent. You know, it's putting a story um, on paper for people to kind of paint that picture in their mind. You know, it's funny. I think if you wanted to say that there has always been a little spark of a writer inside me, you could probably find it because my my father, even though his career was as a bartender, he 
uh, had written, you know, novels and poetry and got his, got a college degree in in English literature and writing. So and, and he was always writing and, and my home was full of books. So growing up as a little kid, that was always there. But it's, I, I think that if you had asked me when I was 12 or 13 years old, uh, are you going to be a writer when you grow up? And I would have said, absolutely not. I'm going to be you know, in the NBA, I'm going to be the next Chris Weber. I'm going to be a, a lot of things that that uh, I, I found out not too long after then were never going to happen. But um, through writing, I, I was able to find ways to stay engaged with the subjects and the ideas that I had always been passionate about. And, and it really was um, reading sort of great basketball books when I was young that that got me into writing and reading and and thinking that oh maybe there's another way to uh to to be a part of this game and this sport and 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 what it means to people around the world mm -hmm. and then you know um when we met when you came out here uh you were sent to to write about philippine basketball which is such an amazing um experience and you were out here and i think you had a few teams to choose from to follow, right? Can you share a little bit about that? Sure. Well, uh, so it was almost a, it was a it was a scary moment for me because I I I first got to the country in the end, November two thousand five, and I had a year to work on a U.S. government research grant to study basketball, and that time I spent really I like learning about the history I was I was in the I was in Rizal, the old Rizal li library in Ateneo probably for months at a time just reading through all the old newspapers and the old um, you know sports weekly magazines that they had in the archives there learning the history and after that year was over I decided hey I I, I, mean, I really love this and I, I think that I, this is worth trying to write a book that, you know, readers from all over the world could 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 relate to and draw some some inspiration from, and that's when I reached out to the PBA office, which I, I think Sinoli Ayala was still the uh, the commissioner back then in two thousand six two thousand seven, and asked to set up uh, a way to to follow a team through a conference. And actually, it was I didn't. I, it was not my choice. I I just I, I sent them my proposal. I sent them my professional portfolio with some stories I had written about um, basketball, uh, both in the Philippines and before I got to the country. And they asked around, and it it was only Alaska that was willing to take me. Uh, and I think, especially if you you probably know. I think if you ask Nick or any of the other players from the team back then, or anyone who's ever played for Coach Tim Cohn now in Ginebra, uh, it's because Tim, Tim, one, he, um, you know, he's an avid reader himself. He, I wouldn't be surprised if he writes a couple books after his coaching career, and he also loves to talk about his his passion of basketball. So. Uh, I think for for Tim Cohen, it, what he saw the opportunity to to have a writer following his team around, and he was willing to say yes. And I'm very very grateful that he did. And you know, uh, blessing in disguise. I mean, we can fast forward a little bit. Um, Alaska won that championship during that conference with you having documenting like things <laughs> for us. Um, you know, funny story. I want to I want to share with everyone. Uh, we would watch Rafe at every game. He'll come watch the games. <laughs> and we will sit near him, me, my kids, Jeff Cariasso's daughter. And we would just tease Rafe. What are you writing, Rafe? He's just in there like so serious, writing, writing, writing. And we're like trying to look over. And he's just, leave me alone. <laughs> and I, I was like, no, Rafe, show us, show us. Maybe you you, you want to know more things? He's like, no, I got it, guys. <laughs> but it was just such a fun experience with you. You know, we got to know you. You became somewhat family to all of us. Um, and yeah, like I said, blessing in disguise for you is that you actually followed a team organically and they won a championship. So how is that experience compared to, you know, what you've uh, experienced through your journey of learning about basketball or experiencing basketball, uh, other teams around the world? 
Yeah, well, I look, you it, the being around a a championship team is something you couldn't, you know, you can't script that, you can't make it up, you can't plan it in advance and and it was extremely fortunate and and gave a gave me an ending to to the book Pacific Rims that I didn't have to uh to work too hard to come up with something because the team won and we could just do that. Um I think uh, the it, this was the the I th compared to, say, later in my career when I've followed NBA teams and, and um, a little bit of international basketball outside of the PBA, the, the closeness that I got, like you just described, being able to sit with, with all of you during games, being able to attend practices – uh, you know, every day with the team. And it wasn't just you, you guys during the games making fun of me as I was like, I'm left handed. So I'm like doing this in my notebook. Because, uh, you know, 2005, six, we all had Nokia phones. So no one was taking in a phone then. Um, so I was writing it all by hand. And, and the players, the guys during practice would come sit next to me and joke, what are you writing in there? Man? Oh, again. Um, so it was, it, it was the same thing everywhere, but that intimacy doesn't exist. I've never encountered it in any other like professional basketball um, environment anywhere in the world, at least for, for a writer to let someone in, to be open and generous like that. And obviously that has a lot to do with um, Filipino culture and hospitality and, and uh, being open and, and also just the, the family atmosphere that, that PBA teams and, and of basketball in, in the Philippines is, is something I think uh, more tight knit than you will find in, in other countries where it, it, it really it can be just like a job. Right. And, you know, you, the time that you were here, I think you learned more about the Philippines than a lot of us. And I love all the pictures that you have posted on your social media. You know, you really went to um, the province. You really went, you know, um, you know, you touched the, the culture. You, you got to know uh, the Filipinos in our like rawness. And, you know, what were the things that were like uh, memorable for you during that time? Apart from of course, Alaska winning. <laughs> of course, of course. No, I mean that was the amazing thing. Uh, there were there were moments outside of my experience with the team, and and I would say that uh, even though it it might not be as memorable a part of the book, or um, might not be a, as obvious in what I wrote, the the traveling I did, visiting, you know, really being uh, being able to, you know, spending time in multiple provinces, uh, seeing basketball, playing basketball, just wherever I went, getting to to feel what the sport meant to people all over the country, that informed everything I wrote in a way that was really, you can't, you can't replace that. And, um, and, and I saw some, I've, I still, even now, I mean, even now, after having lived in the Philippines for, you know, three years straight before when I, when I was there working on the book and then returning almost every year for the next 11, 12 years for at least two weeks, sometimes way longer. Um, I still, every time I come back, I still see things that take my breath away with regards to basketball and just in terms of everyday life ingenuity. Um, the, the way really, I think the thing I'll never get tired of is seeing whether it's in the city, whether it's in the province, homemade basketball courts, whether it's, you know, wh 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 if it's, if it's in the province and it's, it's a backboard put up of, of wood and, and, and a, a rim that they, that they made on their own or um, the small little courts that people will, the small little baskets they'll hang in the cities uh, on the outside of a window and play for 10 minutes and then take it away uh, along the, the train tracks in Manila. Uh, it's, it, it for someone who grew up loving basketball and and still you know i i still play whenever i can it's it's just beautiful to see that that love reflected so strong everywhere throughout the culture mm -hmm. and of course it's it's a religion out here you know that's what makes uh, filipinos happy is just the game of basketball you know having uh, a ball and a backboard like you said even makeshift ones um so what were the areas that that you love the most in the philippines 
Oh, wow. Um, I know that might be a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. That, that's, it's, I, I'll be talking for the next all, all night now. Um, I, I mean, Maybe the closest. Yeah, the, the closest <laughs> to my heart is probably, you know, I, and still I, I every time I come back almost, I, I, I will stay there. I always stay in Katipunan um, because that's where mm -hmm. I lived before. And um, even though the basketball courts are not the most beautiful, you know, they just, it's just, it's just a barangay and it's Loyola Heights across from Ateneo in Manila, you don't, or in Quezon City, you don't really see anything breathtaking there, but it's just, it, it is such a special place to me going to the covered court there, um, playing, you know, like playing Pustahan games there, shooting around, just, just being, being in that area really is still a special place to me. And, and, and I, I always remember um, the first like Liga championship game I attended in my own neighborhood when I was living there in like 2006 or 2007. And it was uh, a, a, a night that changed. I felt like it changed my life. It taught me so much because everyone I had met in the street of, over the previous two years living in, in, in that neighborhood was at the covered court that night watching this championship, this Liga game. And it was, and they had, you know, there was ropes around, they put ropes up around the court to keep people from getting on it. And still people were getting on it despite the ropes. And it was just that, that seeing everyone, it was sort of like, this is your life inside one little area. And, and that to me was, was the heart and soul of, of basketball in the Philippines. And um, of course, traveling, uh, seeing basketball courts uh, almost on the slopes of Mount Mayon in Bicol or in, uh, oh, I mean, everywhere, everywhere. You, I, I like in, uh, even when I'm just a tourist traveling to El Nido or Coron and seeing all the beautiful, you know, like, like the island hopping, you, you go island hopping and there's a basketball court on every island. You're like, wow, I'll shoot around here. This is pretty. So it, I, I, it's almost impossible to, to choose. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, what were your what was your favorite dishes? I mean, you know, I'm pretty sure everybody everywhere you went, people fed you, right? Yes. That's, that's our <laughs> <laughs> so what were your favorite dishes that you like miss when you I, go back I, I, I'm still digesting my 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 <laughs> my Christmases in the Philippines uh, 15 years later. Um, um, I I mean I I've I I always like simple foods. I, um, my favorite, my favorite food to this day is still ginisang mongo. I will, I, I will make it myself. I will um, buy it anytime I see it. Uh, I when I first, you know, I moved here to Michigan from LA last year. Uh, so LA, of course, I was living in Eagle Rock. I was down the street from you know Mark Kagiwa and Alex Kapagnot's families and you can get in Filipino food anywhere around there but it's a little it takes more effort here in Michigan but my first week here I still found the place where I can go get some mongo I can get uh good uh kare kare um and but but I'm yeah I I I I love mongo I love just really good lugao the the simple foods that really are just so satisfying for me mm -hmm. I mean, I think what for you maybe is the bond during those meal times, mm -hmm. the memorable ones, because Filipinos love to eat, they love to sing, they love basketball. Yep. Right? <laughs> Don't you agree? We well, no, have of a course. call with the mic. Did everyone say, Rafe, your turn to sing? Yeah, I, 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 even, I, I don't sing well, but I never say no. <laughs> Hey, we, we all have a talent in singing when we're you know, having fun <laughs> or, you know, having the, the extra liquid diet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, going back to, to being a writer, I know that there are times that maybe you might feel writer's block or unmotivated, but you have a deadline. How does Rave turn that switch back to, uh, you know, being motivated again? Um, I think for me, uh, yeah, writing can be really hard. It, it's something when it's done, you all uh, uh, personally, I always feel very proud that I've finished this, whether it's an art, just a small article somewhere or, you know, something as big as the books I've worked on. Uh, it's 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 a it's a really great experience. But 
<laughs> you you don't necessarily feel that way during the process. Uh, mm -hmm. There are hours where you spend sitting there staring at the screen, procrastinating, uh, now scrolling on social media, doing anything to avoid writing. Yeah, there I go. Uh, and um, I don't know that there's a secret to it. It really is just dedication. It's If it's something, you know, it, it is something I care about. And whether it's writing that someone cares about or any other project, you're going to go through some moments where you're distracted or you are um, just not in the mood quite yet or waiting for the right inspiration to hit. And I, I've, I've always felt like the act of sitting, even if, even if I'm not productive for a few hours while I'm sitting there working on something, that's part of the process. That's part of... That's something I have to go through, even if I hate myself while I am in the moment doing it. I know that eventually the moment is going to come. The idea, the spark is going to be there. And when it's and, and, and it's not going to be there if I'm not sitting there for a couple hours and giving it the opportunity to arrive. And when it arrives, that's when you have to strike and take advantage and make the most of it. So what was the biggest challenges for you on writing Pacific Rims? Of course, that's the closest to a lot of Filipinos' hearts since you actually wrote about our culture, you know, our passions. What was the, the challenges that you had to face? Well, I, I, first, I, I would say it's also, I think, the closest to my heart, you know, despite, you know, of course, uh, being um, American, you know, my parents are, uh, have, are, you know, were never, uh, had never traveled to the Philippines before I did. Um, and, but uh, the initial challenge was that, was uh, immersing myself in the culture and taking the time to really um, get to know the basketball world, both the, the 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 PBA world, which is its own little bubble, which I'm sure you you know sometimes probably want to get far as far away from as you possibly can, um, and then also the grassroots world, the the just the the everyday you know kids playing in in their chinelas and and just having fun, what it means to the everyday uh, Pinoy. Um, and, and it, that just took time. I had the luxury of, of that grant that I, that brought me to the country in the first place that paid for almost two years for me to, of, of living there. And then just staying and, and absorbing and studying language and really being able to un, sort of understand my environment in a way that a lot of um, foreign journalists don't do when, because they only get two weeks to arrive into the where, wherever they're going to write, say they're going to write about the Philippines. They get two weeks, they fly into Manila. They're staying in Manila Pen or some very fancy hotel far away from it, kind of everything that, that's normal in life. And they, uh, and, and it's very hard to get a real feel for how people actually feel and how they actually live when you do that. So I had the luxury of time and I wanted, and, and I was determined to use it. And that, that helped a lot. Um, and I, I think that's what I was, uh, what I'm ultimately proudest of with Pacific Rims is that when it came out, the people in the book, the people who are reflected in the book, you know, the, 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 the Filipino readers, um, both, you know, when I've been back in Manila and around the Philippines and, and you know, Philam's here in the States and, where, and, and elsewhere have said that it, it feels real and authentic to them, that, that the, the, the scenes and the picture, the, the, the stuff I wrote about is, is like what they experienced. And that, that's the most important thing to me um, because... Mm -hmm. The truth is, unfortunately, to an American audience that 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 doesn't necessarily know a lot, you can distort a lot of things. You could say you could you could probably make up half of it, and they won't question it. Um, yeah. So, to to hear from the people who are actually in the book that hey man, you you got it right. Um, yeah. That's that's the proudest thing for me. Yeah. And we're forever grateful for you, Ray. You did an amazing job. Like, uh, you know, I, I read the book and I, I do remember snippets. Um, 
good thing you didn't really put everything on there where, you know, <laughs> the reality of, of being a wife or a partner. Because I mean, you know, that's what I always share with people that as a fan, it's all fun and games, right? But as a B, when you're part of the family, it's like a different level of thinking. You know what's at stake. You know um, the fears is I don't want my husband to get hurt or my brother or, or my uncle. So, you know, you uh, put in perspective how the reality of, I guess, the family side and also the, the culture side yeah. of things and being a fan. Um, but it was fun, you know, it's always fun hanging out with you, Rafe. Like, you know, you really uh, made an impact on all of us, you know, having done what you did. Uh, my, my sons actually went to one of your book readings in Berkeley. 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 I don't know if you remember that. Nico and Mike were there with my um, my mother-in-law and you had right. a book reading oh, in Berkeley. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I remember <laughs> meeting Nick's mom funny. there. I don't remember Nico and Mike there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That, I mean, <laughs> it was incredible. That was, I love that, that when, when, yeah, I, it was such an honor to meet her there. I, I was really, really flattered that she had made the trip to see, see it. It was, it was great. Of course. Oh, I mean, wow. you know, you wrote about, of course, her son and yeah. she was, and she's also a writer too. So she was like, wow, this is amazing. And, you know, like you, you, set it perfectly you know having him immer being immersed in our culture you saw a different picture you know you saw the reality of like the rich and poor there's no in between there's you know uh, the happiness and and you know just the the overjoyed you know i think regardless as filipinos no matter what we're going through that you're always going to find a smile on their face mm -hmm. you know they're always going to be happy to see you and trying to feed you whatever they have in their house which is sometimes <laughs> little Right. Um, I have a question here from from Alex. How are the things you've how are the things you've learned about being Filipino that you were able to take home in the US? Wow. Um probably I, I mean I think it, it, it uh, a, a lot. I mean, in some cases, mannerisms, you know, I still still have picked up, you know, I, I'm I have not gotten out of the habit uh and sometimes, you know, uh, you do this in the in the in the US and sometimes people look at you strange because I will, you know, um I, I will still just give people the eyebrow raise, uh, it, and Americans don't necessarily understand that as a greeting the way that uh Pinoy's do. Uh and uh, but I think honestly, um, the the I I think I learned a a greater collective sense of self. You know the values like utang uh, the the and just like um, really trying to. Um, I guess yeah, because the U.S. is known as a very individualistic culture, and I think that's a true thing about um, the country. And I think at, when I moved back here after living in in the Philippines for years, I did. I was I was less. Uh, I was a less selfish person, and I think in a in a very good way, in a way that has has made me a better person overall. Mm -hmm. Out of all the plays that you wrote about, who was the most memorable one? <laughs> I mean, I know that one, but which one was the most memorable? There are there are many many, but it always it always comes down to um, Mr. Willie the Thriller Miller, um, <laughs> who you know has some of the most memorable scenes in Pacific Rims, uh, and some of the I mean, and and I'm sure I, I'm sure you heard stories of things that I never even saw or heard about that were uh, more epic even than the, the, than the stuff that I, I know. Um, Willie, and the thing is, Willie is such an infectious, fun, amazing, great basketball player, first of all, right? And, um, and but, but also one of the most fun and open and, and welcoming and hilarious people you'll ever meet on the planet and um that combined with him having one of his mvp seasons you know at the the peak of his career with alaska then was a was a great moment for me to try and capture in writing and i always remember one of the first things i always think about that i i think the the best way to describe willie that i've ever heard came from nick and, and it's in the book he told me he, he he it was basically like 
and this is coming from Nick, a person who's, who uh, loves basketball, telling me he I've never seen someone who loves basketball as much as Willie Miller. Um, and he said, you know, he described one time, basically, I don't know if you were in the car or if you were there, he was like driving up the coast, uh, going to Zambales and there he's, he's on the way to go surfing on vacation. And he saw Willie playing, uh, uh playing basketball and like, uh, on the court, on the street next to him. And he stopped, he's like, Willie, what are you doing? Um, and you know, just like Willie will play no matter what. And, um, he still he he still will, and it's great to I when I was visiting last year, I got to see um, I got to see him helping coach the Alaska Power Camps with Jeff Cariasso and Tony De La Cruz and the whole like there's the whole Alaska family again, and um, it was really it was really special to see that that Willie's you know humor and just openness and, and all of that. He, he he was so good with the kids and they loved him so much it, it it's i think he can coach at any level he wants to um but if he if he were to choose to to work with kids for for a long time i think that he would be one of the greatest youth coaches you could ever find he's a great example you know i'm glad you mentioned willie because that's one player that you feel as though he doesn't take the game seriously because there's always a smile on his face, but he is really like, you know, he would like, uh, he, he'll, he'll just shock you. You know, you think you'll like defend him like, you know, a certain way, but not, nah, he's still gonna find a way and make it in and then just have this big, big grin on his face. Um, I had a, um, you know, just a, a great experience with Willie because I brought um, a few uh, of the legends to, to Zamboanga for my charity event and you know Willie my gosh he loves the fans he'll just go you know next to him when we were allowed to of course hug them while they're taking a selfie he'll like kiss them on the cheek and I'm like Willie <laughs> that's so hilarious and I just love that I love the fact that he's able to connect with with you know the people that love the way he is or where he's made it or just being you know um surrounded by people that are just generally happy to see them right like uh like we were talking about uh basketball itself is like a religion here in the philippines imagine seeing basketball players where you don't normally see them or you just hear them on the radio or on tv and when they visit you know the provinces it's like wow like it's a wow factor the way that they receive the hospitality and just you know people screaming right here by the ears like yep they're real you can touch them but yeah um you know going back to to how you even described that i think you you wrote about that too um i'm sure that you were even um in awe when it was the 80s and 90s basketball you know because back then there was no social media at all there's no cell phones so it was like the highlight of every filipino um do you do you agree with me Oh yeah, that I mean, it, because the the sport had such a gigantic role in 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 Philippine culture at that moment because ex exactly like you said, there wasn't there, it was before even widespread cable TV was available. This was like you you watched basketball because you loved it, and also because there wasn't much else to watch some days. And um, and this really it was before it was before it was easy to watch you know, two NBA games every morning uh, because you can just watch it on TV. This, that it was, it really had a monopoly at the time. And um, it's in a way, I, I mean, I wish I could have, I wish I could have been there. I wish I'm, I were, oh, I, I, well, it's not too often that I say, I wish I were older. I feel old enough already, but that was one, that is one thing that it would be really special to to be old enough to go witness whether it was seeing what it would be seeing you know the the 1980s pba with billy ray bates and the crazy and norman black when he was still a, a young player instead of the coach who still looks young and and is actually you know a bit older um and seeing you know them and the great play and you know patrimonio in the 90s jolas when he was at his best and i know i know nick is sort of a bridge between those yeah. eras because when he first came, came yeah, he was playing against all those guys when they were still stars, uh, or a lot of them, and, yeah. and so he know you know he kind of saw both sides of it. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it was 
I, I loved hearing those stories. It's it's and and, I, and we can't. I, I I mean, I can't get enough of them. Yeah, he was a bridge. He actually still got to play against, or I think uh, Jaworski was part of the coaching player coach in a way. So of course, for him, it's like oh my goodness. And then having to play against their kids <laughs> too. It's like, okay, it's, I think it's time to go. But um, yeah, I, of course, you know, my husband's a basketball lover, like forever, ball is life. So I, I got to hear all this history and then, you know, just the kids and I were just, you know, having your book written. We're like, oh, so amazing. You know, I love history and the fact that, you know, having witness, you know, being there, um, watching professionals and hoping that, you know, one day maybe my kids will get into involved. Um, I don't know if you've been following uh, my kids, but, uh, you know, we have a lot of boys, right? And we have one girl and she is the one that was posting our basketball, watching basketball. You can even ask Nick, like telling Nick the news. So you guys will probably get along <laughs> when, you, when you talk with the, the language, but, um, I guess I just have to, uh, yeah, appreciate that we have another mini Nick that will just talk basketball all day, every day. And it just happens to be my only daughter. <laughs> but I love her. <laughs> um, yeah, we have to get a copy of your book to, to give her so that she can read it too. Because I think our copies are all in the States, right? Um, so, you know, Rafe, I'm sure there's a lot of people, um, Filipinos, Americans, uh, all over the world that are wanting to know um, advice from you, you know, having um, loved basketball all your life and then being a writer, you know, you've written, um, you know, many books. What would be your words of inspiration to them? Uh, you know, how to uh, follow your footsteps somewhat or how can they start or, or be inspired to still achieve their dreams regardless of the challenging times that we're going through? Um, I think, you know, for me, the, the, if, if you can find a way, if there is a opportunity ever to um, to go try something new, to 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 chase a passion to somewhere you you where you don't know where it's going to lead, um, and and those opportunities can be few and far between. Like they 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 are they don't always come along, and and you can be you know you. I was very lucky to have that kind of opportunity, but if it shows up, do it, figure out a way to do it. Uh, it even if it means, um, you know, having to change your life, turn things upside down a little bit, go through, go through some kind of hardship that is that, that you can handle. Um, it can be worth it. It can change your life in 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 just incredible ways, and, and just set you on an entirely new path. I, I mean, I cannot imagine now the the person I would be if I had never had the experience of moving to Manila when I was 23 year, years old in 2005, and living there for for the next three and a half four years, and then it, I just don't. I, I literally have no idea what I would be like. It's such a, it's such an important part of who I am today. And I'm very aware that all, I mean, look, there, there's no other American writer who's ever really tried to, to do anything like this. Um, so I, I know that how rare that opportunity is and how lucky I was to, to be in that position. And that's also, that also motivated me a lot to try and make the most of that opportunity because I was there, you know, when I was um, interviewing the players on Alaska in 2007 and scheduling interviews with legends on the side, talking to Philip Cesar and Ato Eko and all these really, really important people in hit, not not even basketball history, but almost Philippine history because of how great they were in basketball. Um, and, and also became kind of politicians in some cases. Um, but they, so, so it I was always conscious of the idea that I, they are being, people are being so generous with me. I, I, I want to live up to my side of it and make something important out of it. Write a book that lives up to the, the amount of generosity that people have showed me and that they can be proud of, like, like I want to be proud of. Um, and, but yeah, I, I think that if you get whatever that, whatever, and obviously 
the passion doesn't have to be writing for for you. The passion does not have to be. Uh, it, it's whatever gets you going, whatever you love and care about. If you get a chance to go do it in some way, go for it. Really, because it can it can put your life on a whole different trajectory and and open up all kinds of new opportunities for you and also just give you the experience of a lifetime and and, and which is exactly how it worked out for me mm -hmm. yeah you know there's a lot of people that are probably curious now of um how the philippines is you know through your words and even your language you sound filipino right if people are closing their eyes and you keep you know injecting the tagalog man you got it on point you got the 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 accent you got like you know not everybody knows that they're foreign like can you give me a whole sentence can you understand like everything now yeah okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. you too much basketball in the province, I think. That's how you you learn all the, the Tagalog. It um, helped. Can, yeah, can, I, playing ball with guys and with tricycle drivers and just, you know, that, that was a big part of learning because I was studying before. You know, I was studying. I had a tutor. I had all those things. But when I'm, you know, obviously the guys in the basketball team would speak to me in English because it's just easier. So it was really with um, – you know, guys in the street, people in the province who would, who would speak, who would, who, who, who had no choice, but just to, to let me, you know, speak my Tagalog <laughs> until I, until it got a little bit better. Oh my gosh. So guys, you know, if, uh, especially Filipinos, if Rafe can learn the language within less than like months, cool. you have no excuses. Can you greet everyone in Tagalog? Well, sige, uh, Salamat sa inyong lahat. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong lahat sa ano pagtangkilik uh, ninyo sa akin sa ano kay Mafe sa lahat. Um, seryoso, salamat. Love it. Amazing rave. Um, you know, normally I ask guests, you know, the, the now I'm kidding aside. What is your um, you know, your core values that you live by? Um I kind of think that it is, and and I, I mean, I didn't, I don't remember, I don't recall going to a lot of Sunday school. I went a couple of times, um, and I, you know, I was raised Christian, um, but but it is the kind of like the golden rule. It is do unto others, um, mm -hmm. and treat people right, treat people with respect. Uh, that has that certainly. I, I, that's something I believe in outside of uh, professionalism, outside of career, outside of, you know, my goals as a writer. But I find that doing that, it's very simple. And that's the key to, to the, a lot of the success I've had as, as a writer and a reporter, being able to talk to people and, and, and having them open up to me and tell their stories and let me write about them because I, you know, try to be open and respectful and, and want, and really want to hear and understand and empathize with their stories and where they're coming from. And, and that is the, that to me, that that's really the key. I think it's that, that those sort of simple, basic treat people, right. It's not, it's, it's, it's one of those things that is easier said than done. Um, right. But if you can do it, uh, you'll be a, you'll be a good person. Yeah, no, I agree with you. You know, um, treating yourself with respect, the universe, and others are the, the the key things in life. You know, it's not the material things. It's 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 what they say is your network is your network, but really, mm -hmm. it's your network it really shows who you are as a person, right? Um, and their feedback or their testimony about you, and our testimony about you, Rafe, man, you became a brother. You became a really good friend. Um, just researching like all our pictures i like the kids found a picture of us in vegas i didn't even I saw, I didn't I, you guys put that one up i was like oh my god oh no wow that was a long time with alvin and nico. yeah hey, what's up nico <laughs> alvin you guys dug deep but i you know that's what i appreciate about um you know past memories and and pictures and um you know, there's so many moments. I mean, you even sharing the dates that you're out here, you're pretty much here through like 
the, the, the course of Nick and I's relationship and all the kids, it's like, I still remember moments that uh, we'll be at cable car or trying to make you, you know, being hospitable to you. <laughs> You're like, guys have work to do, I gotta go. And like, nah, Rafe, stay. <laughs> but um, Rafe, please invite everyone to, to, I'm sure Pacific Rims is still on uh, available. And I do advise everyone to get your, grab your copy. You know, you'll be entertained. You'll you'll learn a lot about the Philippines, the culture, basketball history. Um, so go ahead and invite everyone to where they can find the book. Sure. Um, so actually, you know, this is the ten year. Wait, wait. Sorry, someone's here to just say hi real quick. Yeah. Yo, <laughs> what's up, man? How you, how you been? Hey, you looking good, brother? <laughs> I gotta go to work though. Shoot. Catch hey. up. Good to, good, good to hear, man. Do your thing. All right, man. Nick, love man. you, man. Thank, Thank you. Me. Much love. Okay, go ahead, Rafe. Invite everyone to where we can find Pacific Rims. Yeah, so um, this is actually the 10-year the anniversary of Pacific Rims. It was released. It's crazy. Okay. I don't know how. I, I, I don't want to. It, it's both uh, special and also like, oh, my God, how old am I? But... <laughs> It, uh, that means uh, it, it was released June 1st, 2010. So um, a little, you know, 10 years and a couple of months ago. And um, the book is still in print. Thank you to, uh, honestly, that that is all, all entirely due to the readers uh, in the Philippines who continue buying the book uh, at, you know, fully booked, uh, and and national and I know Power Books really isn't around anymore, but when it was buying it there, even um, but it it's the that that keeps the book in print um, and I'm so grateful for it. I'm really proud that it has lasted that long because I don't think that my publisher, if, you know, 12 years ago when they bought the book, even thought that it was going to be around that long. They thought, oh yeah, we'll just let them do this, whatever. Um, but the book the book still matters to people and that, may, that means so much to me. Um, so yeah, you can find it still in Amazon, uh, in, which is easy if you're in the States and I, you know, Amazon can also ship to the Philippines. Uh, and also, you know, all of the bookstores in, in, in the Philippines will have the book. Um, you have to order it sometimes, sometimes it's there. But still, if you ask, they will find it, uh, and it's still out there. So, so if you'd like to read it, please, um, by all means, uh, go for it. Uh, enjoy. Yeah, especially right now, guys. You know, we have to continue <laughs> reading, and this is one amazing book to have on your shelf, or even share with your your kids. You know, the ones who are homeschooling. And Rafe, yeah, you got another trait of a Filipino. You're forever mm. young. Don't worry. You may think you're old, but you actually got the glow of a Filipino. Yeah, and thanks. That's that's because I got to live the. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, I, I spent enough time in the country that you know I soaked <laughs> even or the, red <laughs> or the balot. Did you even? Eat balot? Oh yeah, yeah, of course I've had balot. <laughs> See, there you go. You know, I ate, the, I ate Mang Tom's Papa Itan in in Xavierville. Oh, <laughs> See, you just bring back the culture and how fun it was hanging out with you. Um, again, I appreciate you, my family appreciates you. Um, guys, I'll make sure that Rave's social media handles are here. So if ever you have any more questions or advice, you know, um, I'm sure Rafe is more than happy to answer those for you. Um, maybe you have last shout outs before we wrap up, Rafe? Sure. Um... I get, you know, I, I always think of my friends, everyone in that involved in Pacific Rims in that um, that Alaska season, uh, that entire team. I was looking at the roster the other day and seeing that I think only um, Mike Cortez and Ray Hugnatan are still playing of that group. Uh, and hey, guys, keep playing, keep it alive. Uh, I, I mean, I love seeing them out there. And um, but just really uh, everyone involved in that team. I saw I, I I'll send it to you guys. Um, Roselle Ellis is a is in the police in Seattle now. Um, wow. Yeah. I know you are married, too. So yeah. congrats. Congrats, Roselle. Yeah. I saw the photos of you and your beautiful bride. And yeah, uh, right? thinking about that, that, um, that team, the championship team. And then uh, did you come to Disneyland with us, too? <laughs> I didn't get to go to Disneyland. <laughs> Plus Fred did not give me the bonuses. I, would, I wish, I wish I got bonuses. 
But yeah, regardless, Rafe, it was so much fun uh, meeting you and just having this friendship this long. Congratulations on your 10th year anniversary for Pacific Rims. You deserve it. Um, you worked hard for that. And um, I apologize on behalf of everyone who tried to, you know, distract you or bother you. <laughs> but, I was you know, learning from every moment, don't worry. <laughs> That's just how we are. And guys, you know, like I said, please get your copy of Pacific Rims. Um, we want to, uh, you know, give the support to Rafe and what he's done for the um, Philippine basketball, Philippine history. Um, it's such an amazing um, and big deal to to all Filipinos of what Rafe has, has done for us. And with that, guys, you know, with everything said and done, actions speak louder than words. And thank you for tuning in in this episode of In Love With Me. Rafe, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for watching and love of me series. <laughs>